I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Hey everybody, I just feel like to show you guys an example of a failing 18650 battery or a battery that's just simply worn out, a lithium ion battery. So here we have some batteries charging up on the uh, Opus BTC 3400 charger and the ones on the left are a pair of Panasonic NCR 18650Bs which were originally 3400 milliamp hour cells and they were brand new. These have been in service for about five years. The cells on the right are um, Sony US 18650GR. These in particular are 2200 milliamp hour cells and they're actually from 2003. They were harvested out of a, a laptop battery, but they still work perfectly fine. The Panasonic's on the left, though, they're definitely uh, aging out. So, I actually have a few of these uh, cells. Now, of course, the cells that are on the charger are actually rewrapped. So they don't have the original wrap. This is a original wrap on an NCR 18650B. But these two cells in particular are showing signs of uh, aging out. They will not go up to full charge. So, for example, we got these Sony cells on the right. I'll change this to Celsius for those who like Celsius. So they're about 24.5 degrees Celsius. So our left one is 26 degrees C. Come over to this one, you can see that one is about 34. 35 the uh, peak there this one however you can see is about 40 C and this one here feels a bit warm this one here definitely feels a bit warm about right for what the thermometer is reading so if you look at the current draw the Sony cells on the right are just about finished charging up here are the setting voltages you can see, of course, uh, this one is up to 4.2 volts. That's the termination voltage. It will actually go up to about 4.21 and the charger will stop. But if we look at these two on the left, you can see they're 4.17. Now these over here have been charging for a bit longer. They do appear to be taking a charge, but I would like to mention something. So these two cells are actually paired together. Um, I have them numbered, so I use them in my cameras as pairs in parallel. So they were at the same voltage when I started charging them. And you can see it does appear they are going to take a full charge, but if I go back and look at current draw, you can see how the charger is putting a bit more current into the left cell, which was the one that was a bit warmer. What can happen? is when the chemistry begins to wear out in these cells it will um, begin to reject charge you know what happens is once the charge gets above a certain voltage the chemistry of the cell will essentially start shedding off that charge energy as heat I've tested cells harvested out of laptop batteries um, that were going bad and they would exhibit this except worse. Um, matter of fact, I had some Sanyo cells in a previous video. If I can find it, I'll link it up there in the corner as a card. Where the cells, would de they would get really hot. And this charger simply could not charge them above a certain voltage. I think it was like 4 or 4.1 or something like that. It just couldn't get above it. Um, and you can see how this one here is still going at about 450 milliamps it goes down to about 430 but it goes back up to 450 you can see how this one here is gradually declining so although both of these cells are definitely aging out the one on the left is definitely experiencing the issue a lot more you can see how this one here is gradually dwindling down whereas this one here has been, still been sitting at to excuse me 430 to 450 milliamps and you see how it's going down to 430 and it's going back up to 450 
do another temp check. We're at 42. So temperature has increased a little bit. We're nowhere near the critical temperature of the uh, 18650, but when it starts when it starts shedding heat like this, it's a telltale sign that the cell is wearing out and it's getting time to retire and replace it with a new cell. So I'll still be able to use these a little bit, but I'm going to have to go ahead and get these recycled and replaced because obviously they're just they're just worn out. Another thing is if you look at the milliamp hours here, the charger is showing how much energy it has put into the respective cell. So I'm going to cycle this through again to make it show all of them. So you can see how this one has 26.54 and this one's up to 27.50 and counting. Not all that is actually going into the cell. Some of that is going out as heat energy. So it will sit there and keep charging and charging. You'll have this massive amount of milliamp hours that will show um, for charge. And that doesn't mean you've got a super high capacity cell. It just means that your battery is rejecting charge. It's, it's, in other words, the amount of energy that the charger puts in, only a fraction of that is actually going in as a charge and up to a certain point, um, the rest of that energy is just getting wasted as heat. This is why I like to cut this is the kind of cell that I would like to refer to as a heater. It's typically not normal for these things to get really warm when they charge. Normally they rain normally these remain pretty cool. It's not the same as like NICADs or nickel metal hydrides where they do tend to get pretty warm when they charge. These lithium ion cells do tend tend to stay cool when they charge. So when they get warm in a charge, it's kind of a, a a telltale sign that you could have a cell going bad and by that I mean the cell is just worn out you simply can't take a charge and this is time to replace it so one more temp check we're at 40 40.3 roughly We're still cranking 450 milliamps of current into this left cell, whereas the one next to it, we're down to, of course, 220. And they are taking a charge, it's just, since we're getting up to that full charge, it's some of that charge energy, energy is getting wasted as heat because the... I guess it's safe to say that the chemistry is starting to, again, wear out and it's not wanting to take all that charge. And again, as I mentioned, I've had cells when they go bad, they will do this to the point where the charger was simply, it simply could not make it up to 4.2 volts because the, the battery was just shutting off that energy as waste heat. So um, they can get much hotter when they get worse than this. So these cells, like I mentioned again, um, it's not exactly time to replace them just yet, but they are getting near uh, their end of their service life. So anyways, that's kind of an example of 18650s when they start to go bad or when they wear out. Of course, there's many different ways they can go bad. Um, another thing I should mention is another example of a bad cell. You know, let's say if you can charge up to 4.2 volts and that cell loses a good bit of its charge all on its own, that's not a good sign. It could mean that there is probably an internal short somewhere, a small amount of resistance between the uh, plates. And that's a cell you definitely would want to recycle and take out of service. But I think this right here just shows more of an example of a cell that the chemistry is getting worn out because obviously these things don't last forever. They do have a finite lifespan number of cycles depending on how they're operated, what kind of conditions they operate in. And I can say these Panasonic NCR 18650B cells, like these two, these two which are also rewrapped, these two over here, 
they get used in my cameras for CubeComp MDDX for, for filming weather and things like that. So these cells have been exposed to temperatures between below freezing up to probably 100 degrees, depending on the time of year. So they have they definitely have seen a pretty crazy service uh, service life. So again, if I mention these cells, they're roughly five years old. At least I've had them for about five years. So I can definitely say I've gotten gotten a good bit of service out of them. So I mean, hey, five years. There you have it. So, anyways, hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well, everybody, that wraps up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to QQ channel, and be sure to tick the bell that way you get notified of new video posts. Also, I recommend following QQ Company on Facebook. A link is in the video description. In addition to computer tech videos, I have a second channel, CubeComp MTDX. Links are available at the end of this video. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching and your support.